Hello again. I spoke the other day about the way in which Britain's history is being rewritten so as to give people of African origin a starring role rather than merely appearing here and there as extras. Much of this systematic falsification of our nation's history takes place in museums and also in books and on television. But this is seemingly not enough. The campaign is now being pursued quite literally on the streets of the capital, and the aim is to eradicate our own history and replace it with that of recent immigrants of African and Asian heritage. Two years ago, the West London Council of Ealing decided that a road in the borough, named after General Havelock, a great military hero of the mid-19th century who helped put down the Indian mutiny, should instead be renamed so as to commemorate Guru Nanak, the founder of Sikhism. So it was that part of Britain's history was replaced with the history of an immigrant community. It was against all expectation to think that the London borough of Haringey would be able to resist the temptation to do something similar. Before moving here, I lived in Tottenham for seven years, Lansdowne Road, round the back of the White Hart Lane Stadium. If you want to give directions to anybody in Tottenham, there are various important roads that you use as reference points. So you might say that you live off West Green Road or round the back of Lordship Lane and so on. One of those roads that people get their bearings from is Black Boy Lane. Or at least, it was. Black Boy Lane is so named because there was a public house of that name nearby. This place was probably called that because, like so many pubs, um, that named, it was named after Charles II, whose nickname was the Black Boy, because he was so dark. During the rule of Oliver Cromwell, such pubs were a way of proclaiming one's adherence to the royalist cause, even though the king himself was in exile abroad. A few pubs have borne this name since before Charles II was even born, and there are various possible explanations for why they bear the name. It is unlikely, though, that they had any connection with slavery, not when some of them were trading in the middle of the 16th century. More likely is that they, it was some reference to chimney sweeps or coal miners. Anyway, after the Black Lives Matter disturbances in 2020, Haringey decided that this was a good chance to start changing the borough's history. And so, against the wishes of the people who lived in the street, both black and white, they laid plans to rename Black Boy Lane La Rose Lane after a West Indian guy who came to Britain in 1961. So it is that a street in London, which for centuries has been named after one of our kings, is instead to bear the name of an immigrant who didn't even come to this country until 60 years ago. This is the beginning of a concerted effort to change the landscape of the capital, for the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, launched a fund to look into what is described as the public realm, that's open spaces, statues and streets for normal people. It is called the Commission for Diversity in the Public Realm and was founded to review and improve diversity and representation in public spaces across the capital, including statues and landmarks. He has allocated a million pounds of ratepayers' money to find ways to remember black, Asian and minority ethnic communities, women, LGBTQ plus communities and disabled people by statues and street names. Make no mistake, those roads will not be happy until they've utterly erased us from history and the capital city is full of statues of homosexuals, Africans and people in wheelchairs. Of course, there have to be the right sort of people with these characteristics. There's the statue of Franklin Roosevelt, the American president who helped us win the Second World War in Grosvenor Square in uh, London's West End. This is a genuine statue of a disabled person. But when the Mayor of London was counting up the representation of disabled people, they deliberately ignored this statue. Why? Well, that's because although Roosevelt was a cripple in a wheelchair, he was also a white American, and so did not count as being properly diverse enough. 